Um, okay, hello. Um, I'm going to do um, today then a uh, quite a complicated proof. I'm going to prove the power law. This is one of the first things you learn in calculus. Um, it's, it's basically how you differentiate polynomials. So, if we have f of x is equal to x to the power n, then we can, we can the power law states that um, the differential of that is nx to the power n minus 1. And together with the additional, you can easily differentiate functions like um, y equals um, x cubed plus 3x, which will go to 3, 3x squared plus 3. And you can, differentiate, you can differentiate anything with a coefficient. And using the additional, you can differentiate as many times as you like. And of course, and of course, you can you can use the inverse, which is of course integration, if you, as long as you remember your constant. So it's very useful for polynomials. Although this does not stretch, this definitely does not stretch to anything trigonometric or exponential. So you can't use it for, for equations in the form of y equals n to the x, where n is an integer, for example, or anything like that. Um, I'm going to attempt to prove this. Um, so, um, I mean, first of all, we need some background um, in mathematics to be able to do this. So I've got the formula here, which is for a geometric series, um, and and this is um, incredibly useful. Um, and um, um, if you don't know what a geometric series is, now I'll quickly revise this because I haven't got time to do that. But but but, but um, I'll be using I'll be using this series here, this series given below, and it'll become fundamentally important later. Now I've got R, my common ratio is x, and this is reading from right to left, and, and again this will become a pattern where I've done it this way. It might sound a little bit of an odd way to do it, but I'm reading from right to left here, so I. So my common ratio is going to be x. Um, so I'm going to do. So I'm going to substitute this series into this equation, um, which I've got down here. So um, what I've got is um, my um, va my out value of a is one because one is my first term, one from here. Okay. Um, my value of r, like I've said, is x because x to the n minus two multiplied by x is x to the n minus one. So so my ratio, my common ratio is x. Again, that's 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 a simple idea from geom geometric series. So common ratio is x. So I've got so I've put in one minus r, which is x, x to the part n on my numerator. So one minus x to the part n on my numerator. And then on my denominator, I've got simply one minus r. Uh, again, that's one minus x because uh, um, my common ratio is uh, is x. And of course, of course, the a value here is equal to one, so we can just ignore that. So, okay. So this, so I've got this fraction here. So I've said that this series. According to the formula, the sum of this series, um, this particular series, is equal to one minus x to the part n uh, divided by one minus x. And, uh, and what I've done is I've, is I've um, times both sides, both, uh, both the numerator and the denominator by minus one. And you can do this because this is exactly the same. Because minus one divided by minus one is one. So I'm not actually changing the equation, the identity at all. I'm just multiplying it by one. Um, but but this this changes the formula same. So this one minus x to the n over one minus x is exactly the same as x to the n minus one over x minus one. And this is just a much nicer form of doing it. So this is exactly the same fraction as this. They're completely equivalent. Uh, just a nice way of doing it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do. And this might seem a bit harder while I'm doing this, but it will become apparent later. Completely important later. Uh, I'm going to multiply this this um, equation by x minus one. So I'm going to multiply. Um, so I'm going to remove the de denominator on this fraction. So what I've done is, as is, is I, is I multiply this, so the, the, the denominator goes onto this side. So x minus one, and then all of this in the brackets is x to the n minus one. So that's all I've done here. Um, uh, the next, the next bit seems very complicated, but it's actually quite simple. All I've done is I made a simple substitution. I've let, I've expressed x in terms of two new variables, y and z. So x is equal to y over z. Um, so I've expressed that as two new variables here. So all I've done is I've placed x with y over z. Okay, that's all the way through there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply the whole equation through by z to the power n, which is the um, which is the denominator in y over z. So, so this is what I've got. I've multiplied the whole thing by what z over n. So I've got z, over, z to the power n on this side and z to the power n on this side. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave the left hand side for a minute because it's more complicated, but I'll simplify the right hand side, that's quite easy. Um, so, z to the n, and I, and I can expand the, the, these square brackets out, y over z all to the power of n is the same as y to the power of n divided by z to the power of n. So that we can expand that out. And also, and also um, um, z, z to the power of n multi, uh, multiplied by negative 1 is minus z to the power of n, okay, here. So what I've got is z to the power of n multiplied by y to the power of n over z to the power of n. Minus z to the power 
point eight. So all I've done is I'm, I've expanded that bracket. So I can again I can simplify it the right hand side because um, z to the power n here cancels with z to the power n here. Those two cancel, and I end up with y to the power n minus z to the power n. So that's just simply cancelling. And what I've got here, you might be familiar with um difference of two squares. So like um um x squared minus y squared is x um, x plus y x minus y. So that's basically what I'm doing. I've got a difference of two powers here. They're not squares. Uh, and, and now I'm going to simplify the left hand side so, so we can see we can see what, what this makes. I mean th th this this becomes important later when I when I start um, doing doing the, um, um, the the primary derivation for um, the power rule. And this is just background. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and, and simplify the left hand side. So um, I've um, I've I've basically I've um I've um I've put I've put the power z to the n into this um into this um right bracket. So that, that's that's uh, so I've I've expanded this right bracket out with with this z to the n. So I've multiplied z to the n by every term inside this bracket to give to give this um to give this here um and um. Um, and and I've, 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 um, I, I'll explain how I've done this because I've 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 got I've got quite ahead. So what I've done is, um, like I like I did with the right hand side, I, I changed y over z um, to be y to the part n minus one over z to the part n minus one, and I did that with this bucket as with this bucket as well. So when we multiply this by um, z um, to z to the part n, the z to the power n minus one, we multiply um because um, that's on the denominator that goes that multiplies with the z to the power n, and we use and we use uh, and we use the rule that since since we're di since we're dividing um, z to the power n by z to the power n minus one because that's the denominator we take we take away the power so z to the power n, n minus um, um, n um, minus one so that actually ends up as being z because because um, because um, n minus n minus one n minus sorry um, and then in black is n minus one is equal to one. So so that 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 comes out as z to the one here. That's what I've done there. And I've done exactly the same with the second term. So I've got um, y y to the power n minus two over z to the power n minus two, and z to the power um, so, so one over z to the power n minus two multiplied by z to the n is equal to z is, is, is the same as z squared. So again, that's all I've done. I've just done um, I've just used um, the idea that if if you divide z to the n by something else, in this case z to the power n minus two, you take you take away the powers. That's very simple. And again, I've done it here as well. Y over z multiplied by z to the n. Z to the n um, divided by z is equal to, um, with, is the same as z to the um, to the n minus one because because z, that's z to the one. So we've got z to the n minus one here, and uh, and again z to the n times one is, is z to the n. So that's all I've done here. I multiply that bucket out there. So that's how that works. Um, my next stage is simply um, putting this um, bracket here in, in, in a nicer form. So what I've done, I've said that y divided by z minus 1 is the same as y minus z over z. Because you can see that if, it, if you quickly do divide that, you get y divided by z minus z over z, which is 1. So that's just a very quite quick, um, easy way of, 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 um, of, uh, of, uh, of, doing, of doing that division. So it's, it's completely equivalent. Okay. Now what you'll see is very nicely that we've got we've got um as we've got kind of like a, a Z pretty much everywhere here. You can see Z here, Z here, Z here, or Z here. So the Z's everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out um a, I'm going to take out a Z out of, out of this right hand bracket. So I can do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to take out the Z out of this bracket here. So I've got my Z here. I'm just putting it here for convenience. So I've done taking the Z out of here. So you can see that I've just taken out a single z. Now you can see that when you when you multiply z with this bracket here, the z's cancel, so we end up just with y minus z, and then this bracket here. So 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 that's that's just that's just a little bit of factorising to make it nicer. So now we've got so 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 the important relationship here that I'm going to get across is that y to the n minus z to the n is equal to everything here, and this will be very very important later. It's not so important now, but it will be later. That's what I was trying to get across. Um, now, now I've got this in mind, and you know where all this has come from. I can start. I can start the proper derivation now. So, right, so now we're going to go on to the calculus stuff. So I'm going to start with a simple definition. So when you when you when you say f dash of s, if you if you say looking at something simple like a linear gradient, you're looking at the, the difference in y over the difference in x. So so if you draw a tangent to a curve or something, then you're looking at the change of y um, um, over the change in x. 
so 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 um, like if you have a straight line you you, um, you, you can draw like a right angle triangle to, to show that so so, so 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 the horizontal bit is, is the change in x and the vertical bit is the change in y and to find the grain each of the the change in y or the change in x that's very simple now differentiation um, says that this 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 can apply to any, any kind of form of curve and what and what you're doing is you're saying the change in y the change in x is, tends towards zero because if, if the change is very very small then then you're saying it's not variable. You you, you want an instantaneous, an infinitely small amount of change. This tends towards zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this in terms of limits, um, which is more mathematically correct. So f dash of x is the limit of h tends uh, tends towards zero, and this means that h h is what I'm saying is my little change. So h represents the change, and um, this is going to tend towards zero. So this means that h is very very small. Right, so we've got f of x plus h. Um, now um, f of x is you can think of it as like your y coordinates to f of x, and f of x plus h is is, is like is like a particular point on the x axis plus a little bit of h, and then and then the function of that on the y axis mapped into the y axis. So f of x plus h is a y coordinate, which is just a little tiny bit more than f of x. So the change in y is f of x plus h, which is a tiny change in x minus f of x. So that's that's the y bit. And of course the the, the cha and of course the um, the change in x is just going to be h because because h is just representing a tiny change in x. So um, this is basically what's going on uh, in any kind of curve in, in any kind of differentiation, whatever. So specifically in this case we want to prove it for a polynomial. So I'm just going to let f f of x equal x to the n. And so from now on we're going to be working in terms of this. Um, um, you could use this, you could use a similar method to to derive anything from first principles to something else. Like we could we could if we let f of x equal sine x, we could, we can see where that leads us. But for now, I'm going to let um, I'm, I'm going to let f of x equal x to the n because this will work for any polynomial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace in this equation here um, um, the the y the the f the function of of of, of our x mapped onto our y coordinates, for example. Um, with x to the n, because we say that, that, that our function is defined as x to the n. So, what we've got is a um, um, function of x plus h becomes x plus h to the n, and function of x um, becomes x to the n. So, what we have is f of x equals the limit of, of h tends towards 0 of x plus h um, to power n minus x to power n over h. Okay, I'm going to do some more um, substitution now. So, I'm going to let x plus h equal y and x equals z. And the reason I'm going to do this comes back to this this thing here that we spent we spent the whole, the whole first part do, um, looking at because um, it's in it's in this form. So I'm going to I'm actually going to make a substitution so I can work I can work with this thing I've just proved here. So 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 my x plus h to the n um, is going to equal y and the x is going to um, equal z. And we actually if you have a look at this, the, the numerator becomes a y to the n minus z to the n problem. And hey presto we have we have we have the formula here for it, so I'm going to replace this with this. Of course, uh, of course, I defined what my y and my z equal. Then my y equals um, here, my y equals x plus h, and my z equals x. So if I substitute in um, um, x plus h for, for y and and z and and, and z for x here um, into into this equation here, then then I, then I get this. And and all I've, I I I, um, I don't need to go through it because all I've simply done is I can go through the first few terms. All I've simply done, for example, I'll go through this this this, this left hand bracket here. So all I've simply done is I've said, well, okay, um, y minus z. So I've got for that bit, I've got y is x plus h, x plus h, and z is is is, is x. So y minus y minus z there. So that's all I've done for the whole thing. I just I just substitute it and stuff forward. Okay. Um, so, so, so having, so having um, derived, derived this, um, we, we can see that this left hand, this, this left hand bracket can be simplified. X plus h minus x. Obviously, the x's cancel out. So what we have is we have this. Um, we have, we have um, a h here, and a h here. And you notice that actually we've got a h on the denominator, um, numerator, and a h on the denominator, and these actually cancel out, which is fantastic because we want to get rid of the denominator because. Uh, because because since h is turning towards zero, we've got a zero on the denominator, and that's nasty because we don't want to be divided by zero. Divided by zero is, is a problem in mathematics. So the fact is that we've got the h's cancelling, which is fantastic because it means that we've got we no longer got a denominator. Um, so so what we've got so if I think I've, I've written out the equation twice. Sorry about that. So what what I, what we've got is cancelling those out. We've got we've got simply this. 